What's going on fam? We are making sourdough bagels today. We're using the stand mixer. I'm gonna jump right into it because you already know we gotta get our bagel on. It is 450 grams of bread flour, 50 grams of whole wheat flour. Get that little pinch of whole wheat in there for some extra flavor. Um, we've got 15 grams of sugar. We're using 200 grams of our levain, our levain. Our sourdough starter. It's looking nice and strong there. I'm really loving that. All right, we're gonna just dump that right into the bowl. All right, everything goes straight into the bowl in this. That's why I love making bagels, very simple. All right, 250 grams of water. All right, New Orleans tap water. It's a New Orleans bagel, you already know. All right, next up we've got some salt. We're doing 10 grams of salt. I usually just eyeball it. Um, you know, that might be 10, that might be 12. It might be nine, you know what I'm saying, it's fine. If you have a scale, use a scale. All right, same with the honey. Um, I've made this recipe so many times that I kind of just know how much is supposed to be in there. All right, so I'm going 30 grams of honey here. Um, you can use malt uh, syrup, you can use malt powder. I use honey, keeping it simple because it's always available in my house. All right, we're going to get our stand mixer set up here with the dough hook. Don't, don't let the honey trap your hand there, all right? <laughs> Hook is going onto the mixer. All right, we're gonna raise it up here. I love that wolf mixer with the little raise there. And we're gonna hit it on kind of like the lower end of the speed spectrum to begin. Uh, bagel dough is very simple. You don't need to clean the sides of the bowl. Um, it generally, uh, you know, kind of just takes care of itself. So we'll let it spin there on the lower speed. All right. And then we're gonna increase the speed just a little bit as you can see. The sides of the bowl become clean. The dough starts to become a little bit smoother. And right at the very end, I hit it at high speed, you know what I'm saying, just to get that good gluten development real quick. We're talking about a total mix time uh, anywhere between five to 10 minutes, just depending on the type of mixer you have. All right, removing the dough, the bagel dough. Give it a quick knead. I always like to give it a quick knead to smooth out the surface. Um, you don't have to do too much work to it. It's just to form it into a ball. All right, because we're gonna let this ball ferment at room temperature for two to three hours with a, with a moist towel on top of it. All right, keeping it moist to avoid um, any skin forming on your dough. Now, time to divide our bagel dough. I usually just do it by hand. The dough is nice and stiff. Um, it's elastic, it's smooth, it's very simple to uh, tear it by hand. I'm looking for about 140 gram pieces, 150 gram pieces. Uh, generally, I make six bagels out of this, so uh, what you can do is weigh your total dough, whatever it is, you just divide it by six, and then, you know, go from there. All right, next up, um, we're going to be forming, or at least starting the beginning of the formation of our bagels here. All right, what I do is I take each dough ball, I round it out, and then I roll it into a small log. As you can see, my, oh, where, where do I put the logs? Where, oh, there we go. There, <laughs> there are the logs. All right, so rolling it with the hand in a little circle, um, using the fingertips and the palm of the hand, you get a little smooth ball, and you go forward to make a small log, all right? This is basically setting up our dough to have extensibility when we roll it into the long bagel rope, all right, before we make that familiar bagel shape, okay? We've got our six bagel logs we're going to cover them with moist paper towels again that is going to prevent a skin from forming on our dough which makes it really hard to roll your bagel out if you get a skin on the dough it is a disaster all right so again keeping them covered with the paper towel and we're going to make some bagel shapes now all right always starting in the middle with one hand and then using two hands here what you're looking for is just like that your thumbs are touching your pinkies are spread and it's about the the size or length of your pinky to pinky pinky to thumb to thumb to pinky <laughs> all right about the length of your hands with your thumbs touching all right so there is our bagel shape we wrap it around the hand we uh press down on the seam and we give it a few rolls now you guys are going to watch me roll five bagels all right so there we go in the middle doubling up wrap it around real quick the key is being quick and being decisive you don't want to uh hesitate you just want to get it done your dough won't stick um, if you f if you find that your dough is sticking to the uh, countertop, maybe pop them in the fridge, tightly wrapped so that they can kind of stiffen up uh, and smooth out. All right. It's also possible that you are leaving them in too warm of an environment. Okay. Just remember, 
be confident with it. Oh, he, he, as I said, be confident. I made a little mistake there. Uh, <laughs> but again, uh, yeah, what was that all about? All right, we're rolling our last bagel here again. Thumb to thumb. Pinkies are spread. Give it some nice tension there, and you've got your bagels rolled. All right, have a sheet pan lined with parchment paper here. Uh, we're going to put our bagels in a on the tray here, uh, making sure they don't touch. Um, they're not going to expand or grow in any crazy way in the fridge, but you will notice um, a difference after 48 hours. All right, remember, you're not eating these bagels today or tomorrow. You're eating them in 48 hours, but it's worth the wait because I've got these that were chilling in the fridge for a couple of days. You can see how they've kind of flattened out a little bit, kind of puffed up a little bit. They're nice and cold, and I've got a pot of water boiling right now with uh, malt syrup, uh, honey, a little bit of honey, and some uh, the, the tiniest pinch of baking soda. You don't want too much baking soda. Uh, as you can see, they're floating nice and beautifully. We're boiling them for one minute. All right, so here are the boiled bagels. I've got a bowl of everything seed mixture. I'm everything or bust, and I'm a double side seeder. You know what I'm saying? So you can also do plain bagels. If you were doing plain bagels, you would put them directly onto the sheet pan. Um, you could do sesame, salt. You can do whatever you want, but I'm everything or bust. Um, going into a small, tight bowl, it's important to use a small, tight bowl so that your seed mixture uh, is deep and you get a nice, thorough coverage. So spinning it, flipping it, you know, tossing a couple seeds on there, uh, just doing that over and over again. The bagels are piping hot, but, uh, you know, I just kind of have accepted this into my life. Uh, <laughs> if you have trouble, maybe use uh, some, some kitchen safe gloves or something like that, but you should be fine. We've got the oven preheated at 450, all right? The oven's preheated at 450, and our bagels are going straight into the oven. 20 minutes later, 15 to 20 minutes later, you already know it's bagel time. The bagels are looking absolutely stunning. Nice color, beautiful, beautiful crust. Uh, nice and soft, nice and squishy. I'm cutting into this one at like literally, look at the steam there. Right as it came out of the oven. Oh man, that's a soft, squishy, beautiful bagel. I really had a good time eating this one. I, I remember um, it was a couple days ago. <laughs> it was delicious, fam. I really appreciate you coming to Straight Off the Blog, watching the sourdough bagel uh, tutorial. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe to artisanbrian.com. Holla at your boy.